All right, Dr. Connolly, great to have you with us. Great to be here. We're going to keep the engine rolling, keep things going. Um, Our topic today, um, as a neurosurgeon, we're going to be focusing on spine health. Um, We're going to talk about back and neck pain. Um, (laughs) As everyone here knows intimately, uh, back and neck pain are a staple of the primary care visit. Um, But one question that often comes up is at what point should you be referred? Should you be um, called for consultation when it comes to the patient with back and neck pain? Sure. Well, I think as, as most, uh, most everyone in this room knows, uh, 80 to 90 percent of people have an episode of back or neck pain in their life at some point. Uh, so it's extremely common. Um, and, and 90 percent of those, uh, those patients will resolve their symptoms within a period of about six weeks or even, maybe even a bit less. Um, if a patient goes beyond that six-week period uh, and they haven't, uh, their symptoms have not resolved, uh, then that's somebody that that's somebody that you might think a little bit further about uh, about sending uh, sending for another opinion. Um, other things that you would think about if if somebody has uh, if, even if somebody has leg pain or classical radicular radicular pain, that will also get better in time. Um, the, patient, the kind of person that you're going to worry about is if they have profound weakness or weakness that comes on very quickly. If there are other associated things like uh, urinary incontinence or bowel incontinence, but these are pretty rare in the scheme of things. Really, one to two percent of patients with um, <clears throat> with even lumbar disc disease uh, will end up needing uh, will end up having that kind of uh, that kind of clinical picture. And there's other things too, like uh, if somebody has a history of cancer and develops back pain, um, if they have a history of uh, if they have a history of osteoporosis, then the, things like that um, are the sorts of patients where you'd want to sort of escalate um, inquiring with a neurosurgeon. The eight to nine weeks is especially pertinent in my own personal case, uh, sitting in this chair uh, for a long enough time with extraordinary back pain radiating up uh, to my shoulders. I, I'm assuming although these primary care clinicians might be seeing me tomorrow, uh, I might not be consulting with you immediately on that. <laughs> uh, typically not immediately. I mean, it, it really depends on the severity of the presentation. So if somebody, uh, if someone presents with severe symptoms and uh, and it and it, it they're extremely debilitated and and their their function is is uh, impaired, then that's somebody that you might want to uh, that you might want to have see a little bit sooner. Um, if so, with somebody with less severe symptoms and it's clearly radicular pain, then um, then there's certainly a course of conservative treatment that you can try first. I can tell a story when I was 23, I had a herniated lumbar disc and it was pretty miserable, right, for about a month, but then it, it did actually start to get better on its own. Uh, combination of steroids or uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, touch a little Tylenol three, and and things got better. So I mean, usually, and that's usually the story of how things go. Why don't Why don't we go to the other story then, the surgical side, um, the surgical solutions that um, that you offer um, or that patients are presented with? What are the different types of surgical? options out there for patients that are coming in with, with neck and back pain that require your consultation? Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with, there's there's really a number of different categories, and a lot of times it varies with age. So um, so for younger patients, say up to 50 or 60, between 20 and 60, the most common thing you're going to look at is uh, somebody with a herniated a disc uh, that's, causing, that's causing compression of a nerve and causing radicular symptoms, uh, plus or minus back pain. Uh, and that's again something that something that does tend to get better in time. Uh, for the older p- patients, 60 and above, 60s, 70s, 80s, and uh, sometimes even into their 90s, um, the lumbar spondylosis tends to be a lot more common, which is basically arthritis of the lumbar spine. And we get it, unfortunately, just as a consequence of walking on two legs. Uh, everybody gets some degree of it. Uh, and most of the time, we can manage that with conservative treatment. Um, but uh, a lot of times, people want to know, patients and, and physicians will want to know from a surgeon, well, you know, is this going to, is my patient going to end up in a wheelchair? What's, what's, the, what's my outlook? And that's, a surgeon can be helpful with that, too. Um, if we consider these, some of these different options uh, that you have at your uh, disposal, um, what are some of the immediate highlight uh, benefits and risks that come to mind for you in terms of um, such as some of the problems that you discussed and some of the surgical solutions that, they're, they're, that are there, um, are there any key factors that make you say the risk would be too high or the benefit would certainly outweigh the risk here? 
I think it, the main thing in terms of in terms of offering a benefit to a patient, a, a good course of conservative treatment is really important. Um, again, symptoms symptoms permitting. Um, so, if, and that once you have a patient go through six or eight weeks of conservative treatment, which may be physical therapy, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, uh, even the PO steroids, epidural steroid injections, uh, just a range of different. Uh, possibilities, and the patient is still having a lot of symptoms, then you get a lot more comfortable at op- about offering surgery. The other thing that's really important is uh, is to make sure that the that the anatomical picture on the scan matches up with what you're seeing uh, what you're seeing when you examine the patient. So, um, so if you have a patient that has a, a large herniated disc, say for instance, but they don't have uh, but they don't really have that much leg pain, well, that doesn't always necessarily that doesn't always necessarily fit, um, or <clears throat> Or if you have somebody who uh, who has a mismatch, so let's say they have a herniated disc on the right side, but most of their pain is on the left, well then that's something that that's that's something that gives you a little bit of pause too. And you, and it's not that you wouldn't consider doing surgery for that, but it's something that you definitely need to talk to your patient about. Where hey, there's a mismatch here, your symptom your symptom picture and your physical findings are not perfect. Um, so those are things that uh, those are things that can. Uh, that can decrease the, the chance of you having a good outcome. Um, folks that, uh, you know, the, there's not, in terms of risks or patients that you wouldn't want to operate on, I would say that um, the patients that we worry about are patients, again, that have a mismatch of symptoms, they have pure back pain, they have other, um, they have other um, psychological findings. So the surgery that we do is, of course, we like, uh, we like anatomical, everything, when everything fits anatomically, it's great. Uh, but that always occurs within the milieu of a overall biopsychosocial picture. Um, so you want to make sure that um, you want to make sure that you're that you're you're going to be able to help your patient. And that sort of ties into my other question. I wanted to flip it a little bit and ask you about the ideal patient. I mean, I'm sure a number of our our audience, from primary care perspective, um, they really hone the idea of this needs to go, uh, this needs to get some surgical consultation. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get very quick at being able to get a sense of that. But the question of who the ideal candidate for surgery often persists. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's a couple of ideal candidates you can think of. One, so the so one ideal candidate is somebody, let's say they're 32, they've had two months of symptoms where it's radicular pain, they have a good, uh, they have a uh, they have a weakness in their gastrocnemius and, uh, you know, that lateral numbness, and they have a decreased reflex at the ankle, and they have a herniated uh, L5-S1 disc on the left side that's pretty big. I mean, that, that's pretty easy, and that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty ideal um, for a neurosurgeon. I think that we can, we can make a pretty good, not, I can't guarantee it, but I think that you, when you talk to your patient, you can definitely say, look, there's, it all fits. You're young, you're healthy, you're going to get better from this. Uh, you haven't gotten better with conservative treatment. And you're somebody that, if, the, if there's anybody I can help, it's probably going to be you. Mm-hmm. The other kind of patient where you would think about is the older folks. People, you'd think six, people in their uh, 70s and 80s uh, that, oh, you know, they're too fragile. These patients do fantastic if, the, with the right, uh, if they have the right um, anatomical findings and they have the right picture. And they're, they present a lot differently. They present with uh, what's called neurogenic claudication, which, again, most people in this room know what that's all about. They can walk a certain distance. They tend to they tend to be flexed forward a little bit, and they have to sit down to relieve their symptoms. Uh, and when you look at an MRI scan, you can see that there's a lot of overgrown bone that's compressing the nerves uh, in the lumbar spine. It's typically at 4.5 and at L3.4, uh, but it can be at other levels too. And those patients too, again, after a, uh, after a good trial of conservative treatment, physical therapy, sometimes epidural steroid injections, oral steroids perhaps, uh, a mix. It doesn't have to be in any particular sequence. It doesn't even have to be all of them. Uh, we can talk to our patient about what the different options are. But once those patients have a trial of those uh, and they have, again, good anatomical findings on an MRI scan, those patients do really well with surgery. Um, and most, that's, really the, that's really the case for most patients. I would say that I know there's a lot of, and it's, you've seen it in the common literature, uh, in the newspaper, in the mainstream media, and also in the, uh, in the medical literature. There's a lot of lumbar fusion and a lot of people putting a lot of instrumentation into patients. But most of those patients in my practice and my partner, Steve Dante's practice too, I mean, most of those patients do pretty well with decompression without necessarily requiring any kind of fusion or any kind of big instrumentation. Fascinating. 
So a conservative approach can often yield the best results. I think so. But when it's time for surgery, then yeah, the, the surgery is, it works very well too. Excellent. I want to, uh, in my last question to you, turn to another subject that you're very closely involved in that has to do with um, activities that, you're, that you are part of beyond just seeing patients at Cherry Hill. Because I understand sure. you also see patients at uh, the Virtua campus as part of this Penn Virtua Neuroscience Partnership. I don't know a lot about this particular neuroscience partnership, but maybe you can talk about it a little bit. And um, I also understand, you know, I confess, I, I did a little bit of background digging on you, and I saw that you've had a big part in building that relationship, um, sort of like from scratch in a way, to, as a part of the team that helped build this relationship from the neuroscience side. What was that about? Well, I think there's there's really a lot of people in both Virtua and Penn who have really put their heads together to try to bring to try to bring the Penn and Virtua Alliance to life. But I think the the idea was that there there hasn't there hadn't been cranial neurosurgery at Virtua for a really long period of time for ten to twelve years. Um, that's something that they really wanted. If you look at um, if you if you look at cranial, neuro, I mean, there's a lot of people doing spine surgery in suburban New Jersey, but for cranial neurosurgery, there's in suburban New Jersey, it's there's really a, it's kind of it's a bit of a it's a bit of a desert, if you will. Um, there's they of course do cranial neurosurgery at Cooper and across the river and at the shore, but if you look at where you know neuro, there's a lot of people, there's several million people that live here um, that live right around us and. Uh, so we wanted to be able to provide that service. Um, Virtua needed some help in, in bringing that to life. And um, Penn, of course, you know, there's been Penn uh, neurosurgery for over 100 years. So it's something that, um, something that we were able to do very well. And I think that the, they're also from a business model perspective, it's pretty innovative too, because Penn is a vertically integrated health system. They, they own the hospitals, they own the physicians. So working with an outside, uh, working with an outside uh, health system like Virtua or another health system is is pretty innovative, as well. Uh, so, <clears throat> so there's all kinds of people, physicians, uh, uh, advanced practice providers, all kinds of administrators, uh, horizontally working with each other uh, between Penn and Virtua to bring this to life. And the patient patients always ask, well, what does this mean for me? And basically, all it means is, look, we have we have Penn neurosurgeons. Uh, seeing you here in New Jersey and you were doing your surgery uh, at Virtua in another health system. That's it. Um, you're getting the same great pen neurosurgery. Uh, you're getting great care at Virtua and um, it's a model that's, that's working really well. We're really excited to be able to uh, deliver neurosurgery into suburban New Jersey in a, in a way like this that nobody else has ever tried. And I assume this wasn't a development that occurred overnight with a, hey, you know, wouldn't neuroscience over here be great? Let's just take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it happened surprisingly quickly for two, for two large health systems. So I think that the, this, uh, the people at Penn and Virtua first had an idea about this maybe uh, a year and a half ago in April of uh, 2015, and that's the first time I heard about it. And then, but then by the end of uh, but by the end of October, there was they had a transfer agreement together, and by January of this, uh, just in the last year, we've had we started seeing patients there and started operating on them there. So I would say that you know, as as big health systems go, I've, and any if any corporate project, if you will, uh, this came together really quickly. Hmm. I would tend to agree. I mean, most of my experience seeing partnerships develop, it's usually at I guess the key word there is glacial. Uh, as, as, as this is actually really much, very, very fast. It's, it happened really quickly. So, mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Connolly, um, anything I didn't um, ask you that you want to reiterate for our primary care audience on this subject of um, neurosurgery, back and spine, um, uh, spinal and uh, neck pain issues, and of course the partnership. No, I mean I think that um, I think a, a light a light touch in terms of intervention is always is is always a good place to start. And you just and again, like you said, the most primary care physicians have a sense of what's going to need further attention, and you know, um, and we're we're here to help. We also have a cranial neurosurgery service uh, at at Virtua, so um, obviously most of most primary care physicians' needs are going to be with the spine, but we have that too. So, Light touch theme from a neurosurgeon is, <laughs> brings tears to my eyes. It's fantastic. <laughs> I want to thank Dr. Connolly so much for joining us. Dr. Connolly, great to have you with Thanks us. Thanks very much, Matt. Appreciate it. Fantastic.